So let's talk about who, who might benefit. So you maybe you're thinking about taking SPM directly. Um, anybody with a chronic inflammatory condition, whether it's an autoimmune condition or it's a, a non-autoimmune but chronic inflammatory problem like heart disease or um, asthma or COPD. Um, older adults where aging is frequently associated with something called inflammaging, right? The, the inflammation associated with aging, although I, I, I argue it's not really an age-related condition as much as it is a damage accumulation over time related issue. Um, and in athletes or the, or the aggressively physically active, there's actually been some trials, some, some uh, clinical single arm trials where, where they've looked at recovery in athletes um, and, and having improvement in recovery and physical performance. And then there's metabolic dysfunction, emerging research links chronic low-grade inflammation to obesity and insulin resistance, so SPMs could be beneficial in those situations. And then wounds that won't heal, and that, you know, that could be a nagging injury that you have. You know, I've used SPMs a number of times for, for injuries that just wouldn't fully recover. Um, it could be a post-surgical injury. So if you've had surgery and you're not healing well or you've had surgical complications, you might consider talking with your doctor about SPM usage. And then as well, um, what one of the other kind of common would be like a diabetic um, foot lesion. These things are tough to heal, tough to resolve in part because of the lack of, of blood flow but uh, to the extremity. But uh, another area where, um, you know, theoretically people could be very benefited by using SPMs. Let's talk about um, some of the things they're finding with SPMs and infectious disease. So very interesting study um, that came out recently where they were using an animal model uh, of infectious disease. So they were, in this case, they were using E. coli as a bacteria. And so the conclusion of this study was infections encountered during ongoing inflammation in mice reset the resolution mechanisms of inflammation via SPM clusters. Low-dose SPMs activate innate immune responses and pathways toward the resolution response that can be reprogrammed. What does that mean? Sometimes when people have a chronic infection, we generally can classify infection into two categories. You've got chronic and then you've got acute. And the acute is, you know, generally this is immediately life-threatening. And, you know, generally there's a lot of times there's a fever um, and there's some type of um, known exposure, like known immediate exposure. And so this is oftentimes one of those situations where if it's bad enough, you're treated in a hospital... Um, environment, not always, but, but sometimes where you go to an ER and then you get a prescription for something like steroids and antibiotics if it's a bacterial infection. And that is to resolve the infection, right? And so that's acute. It's, it's generally going to run a course between 7 and 14 days, uh, typically not longer. But then you have this, this chronic piece over here. An example of chronic would be something like Lyme like an internal Lyme infection. Um, other, other examples of chronic, and really probably it's not, infection is probably not the best word. Really probably the better word would be imbalance, chronic microbial. The, the term is dysbiosis or imbalance. But, um, and so this could be, a, you know, it's very common to see gram-negative bacteria in people's GI tracts, colonizing their GI tracts, creating all kinds of inflammatory problems. There's a number of bacterial uh, overgrowths or imbalances in the GI tract linked to gastrointestinal inflammation. For example, H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, is a bacteria that can cause stomach uh, damage. And then you have other bacteria like Klebsiella and Pseudomonas and Enterobacter and Citrobacter. These are all gram negatives that can colonize the GI tract and contribute to gastrointestinal inflammation. And then you have things like even E. coli uh, doesn't have to always be acute. It can sometimes be chronic. But, um, but C. diff is another example of that where you have um, C. diff. Many of you probably heard of that in its relationship to inflammatory bowel disease or, or um, ulcerative colitis. And so these are bacterial more in the 
terms of chronic, where they're not acute. They don't just come on all of a sudden and self-resolve within 14 days because your immune system wins or because the doctor treated you. These are chronic infections that can embed inside the GI tract, create biofilms, and be very, very hard to get rid of. And so when they create chronic inflammation and there's no resolution, the tissue just continues to be damaged repetitively over and over and over again. And then what ends up happening, typically if it's in the gut, is you get a leaky gut, which then allows for the chemicals that these microbes produce. You know, one of the more common ones is called an LPS, a lipopolysaccharide or an endotoxin. That gets released into the bloodstream and it can travel systemically causing inflammation throughout the whole body. And this is why these things are linked to the development of autoimmunity and autoimmune problems. And so um, one of the things we know about resolvents, about SPMs, is they can help reset the immune system response especially as it relates to after an acute infection, because sometimes what happens, if, if you've heard of long COVID, many of you have, COVID's an acute viral infection. Long COVID is a chronic imbalance in the immune system that occurs after the fact, after your body's you know, supposedly you know, gotten the, the virus under control. But what, what can happen is you can, you can develop a what's called a long COVID, a prolonged inflammation response even after the infection is gone that just doesn't stop. And there are several mechanisms behind that. One of those mechanisms is is something, we were talking about this earlier, where neutrophils just keep coming into the area and creating or spewing out their, their, their compounds that break down tissue. And so that, that what's oftentimes called netosis and thromboinflammation, which is just a persistence in inflammation. And so what SPMs do for people, and they're studying this now with long COVID, is they block this from happening. They stop that persistence of neutrophil, um, neutrophil-induced da- damage. They also promote SPMs, as we mentioned earlier, they promote these Pac-Man-like cells. That's what this, remember, phagocytosis uh, to come in there and, and basically clean out that debris and, and begin the process of helping to, helping to resolve the inflammatory issue. And then they stimulate certain chemicals here um, that are anti-inflammatory and help to resolve the issue. So SPMs, very, very important. And I, I would suggest that if you have been diagnosed with long COVID or if you've been diagnosed with any kind of chronic infectious disease and you're really, really struggling, you should talk with your doctor about the potential for SPMs as part of your therapy. Um, And coming back over to this, so specialized pro-resolving mediators hold strong therapeutic potential in the management of COVID-19 as they can regulate macrophage infiltration and cytokine production, but also promote a resolving macrophage phenotype. In this review, we discussed the homeostatic functions of SPM activity are acting directly on macrophages on various levels towards the resolution of inflammation. So um, they're looking more and more at this, you know, in people that have had chronic inflammation that's not going away. Okay. To talk a little bit about kind of an extension of what I was I was talking about a moment ago, which is which was that you know a, a gut imbalance or a microbial imbalance in the GI tract can lead to a chronic inflammation type of response. Of course, the gut is is packed with microbes. And even if there's not an infection per se, many of these microbes have chemicals that they produce that, you know, the the gut has to kind of chronically kind of police. And so um, in the, in the surf, in the, in the GI tract itself, you can, you can see here this term endotoxin or LPS is something that bacteria can produce and these micro, microorganism byproducts can lead to damage of the gut lining and so the gut cells have to have a mechanism or a way by which they can protect from those toxins creating a setting up the stage for chronic inflammation that would lead to kind of an intestinal leakage or, or a leaky gut situation. You can see here, surfaces covered by epithelial cells termed mucosal surfaces, and we have these in our gut. We have mucosal surfaces in our sinuses. Um, 
serve special functions as selectively permeable barriers that partition the host and the outside world, meaning these are quarantine zones. Given its close association to microbial antigens or bacterial uh, toxins, the intestinal mucosa has evolved creative mechanisms to maintain balance or homeostasis to prevent excessive inflammatory responses and to promote rapid and full inflammation resolution. In recent years, an active role for the epithelium has been attributed to the local generation. In other words, your, your gut cells can generate SPMs on demand in the maintenance of immunological homeostasis. Ba basically, they're using SPMs to regulate the inflammation in the tissue. So you can see SPMs are implicated in the resolution of acute inflammation that manifests specific epithelial directed actions focused on mucosal homeostasis, including the regulation of leukocytes or white blood cell trafficking, the generation of antimicrobial peptides, the dampening of endotoxin signaling, and the attenuation of mucosal cytokine response. So multiple mechanisms here. You can see this RVE1, that's, that is an SPM. So you can see RVE1, that's an SPM. Lipoxane A4 is an SPM. So there's different mechanisms at play that your gut cells can produce these fats, these fat byproducts, right, to modulate and control the immune system and prevent an aggressive inflammation from causing leaky gut, which would lead, as you all know, hopefully at this point, to a host of different types of problems.